uh, Roger, Professor Simpson? Yes. Hello, hi. <laughs> My name is Stefano. Hi, nice to meet Stefano, you. Stefano, good to see you. How nice. did you find me? Oh, you know, I was just like wandering around the campus and uh, interviewing all the professors and uh, I saw you and I was like, I think I recognize him and thank God it was you. <laughs> so do you have well, a couple of minutes for me? Yes, of course. Thank I, you. Uh, so I'm an ISS student and uh, uh, I saw on the website that you teach media ethics. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. Do you mind? I just have a couple of questions about the website. The, sorry, the course. Uh, so what the course is about? Media ethics is about the, the rules that primarily journalism has yep. evolved in, in this country over, over the last century or yep. so about how to treat some core issues. Truth telling, what is, what is the truth, how do you tell it, uh, what is fairness, yep. uh, what, uh, how do we represent the, the, the diverse identities in, in the community or yep. the society. These are the, these are the issues journalists have, have always wrestled with. Yep. And the ethics course is a reflection of the fact that Oh, nearly a hundred years ago, the media industries, newspapers at that time, magazines, radio, mm -hmm. began to say, well, we, really, we really ought to be fairly direct with the public mm -hmm. about how we operate. Yeah. Um, and in part, it was a reflection <laughs> of, of a realization that they weren't doing things terribly well at the time. Yeah. So there, there'd been some messes, hoaxes, and conflicts of interest and bribery and uh, phoning it up photographs and yeah. all of that stuff. So the industry back in the 1920s began to say, let's, let's, let's kind of write out what, mm -hmm. what we do. And the journalism schools over the, over the, about that time fell into line and said, okay, let's, let's teach ethics and we'll try to borrow from classical philosophy yeah. and, and, uh, it was the beginning of an interest in social science. Yeah. So it began to incorporate some of the some of the findings in social science into this. So media ethics today is is a hundred years old in in terms of of media or, or journalism education. Yeah. And uh, I I actually have a couple of questions. I'm a little bit confused. So media. So you said um, so magazine um, journals. So I think I kind of get it what it is but uh, what do you mean by ethics ethics is uh, is the study of what is right and wrong in mm -hmm. terms of human interaction yeah and you know there's we all have a, a sense of how to interact with yeah. each other what not to do and what yeah. to do most of the time we don't always follow that yeah uh, but in, in media ethics the media are between us yeah in, in so many ways. And I'm not talking now just about the old traditional media, newspapers, magazines, television, radio. I'm talking yep. about social media. Yeah. I'm talking about our capacity to connect by phone, by, by Facebook, by, yeah. by these kinds of things. But those things come between us and the focus on, on media, in quotes, really is about what, what's the role of the intervening medium in affecting this interaction, yeah, does it does it support it, or does it undermine it? Does yeah. it subvert it? Uh, questions have come up more recently in media ethics are about, for instance, do the media have the capacity to harm people? And the answer is very definitely yes. But now now we're we're connecting media journalism to psychology. And, and even to, to uh, brain science and so on, the sense that images and reminders of, of past traumatic events can be, mm -hmm. can be damaging to, to somebody witnessing or be reminded, being reminded of, of those things. Yeah. So, so the, the, the subject has really broadened it's out amazing, in, in, yeah. recent, in recent decades. And, uh, and you said that this is part of the social science and uh, I'm kind of asking to all the professors that I'm meeting around, but uh, mm -hmm. what, how do you define uh, social science? I'm going back to this human interaction. How mm -hmm. do we, how do we, how do we know about ourselves? How yeah. do we know about ourselves in groups? Mm -hmm. 
interaction, small groups, large groups. Yeah. The communication field has been focused for a long time on on these interactions. Yeah. How do we how do we behave in small groups? What's the dynamic changes? It changes as soon as you go from two to three to four yeah. to five to five hundred, and, and and then you get to those larger numbers. You're into mob psychology yeah. and, and and that kind of thing. So it's a, it's a science of human interaction in, in my mind. And in, in the media ethics connection, it's the intervention of media in that science, in that study of human interaction. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And uh, why did you decide to teach the course? Well, there, there are two, two or three answers to that question. Yeah. <laughs> Do you mean for the ISS or, or for you know, initially? I, so I started actually, teaching it 25 like, years ago. So. Oh, wow. Okay. That's amazing. I started teaching it because the department, the communication department, was not then offering any kind of ethical ethics course. Oh, wow. And most of the major communication schools around the country were. So I asked my colleagues, why, why are we not doing this? And they said, because no one has offered to teach it. <laughs> How about you, Simpson? So, so, so Simpson became the teacher. So I had to write the course from scratch. Yeah. And, and it, it's evolved steadily over that time. Uh, it was terrible in the beginning. Uh, yeah? yeah? Why? Um, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I didn't know exactly what ethics ought to be about. Yeah. And uh, it's a little more than falling back on Immanuel Kant and, yeah. and, and um, Bentham and so on. It, it, it is it's really about in today, what is the meaning of a communication yeah. and, and what do we need to think about in making communications that are going to reach other people. Yeah. And it also like, looks like you're in the best place to teach an online, <laughs> thinking about like media and the medium. So. How, how is that going with the online uh, element built into it? So I, I like the ability to communicate directly with students uh, and I get to know them very well even though I, I never meet them. <laughs> <That's an interesting laughs> because we, we, we yeah. talk to each other continuously. In, in, a, in a class on campus, uh, you're talking to them but they're not talking back to you and, yeah. and it's a rare opportunity in a lecture class to, to have an interaction of, of much length. But the, the internet, the, the online course allows unrestricted conversation, and you can you can do all kinds of interesting things that way. And and what you say then sits there for yeah. them to ponder. That's the other nice thing about it: the reflection. That's, that, you, yeah. You, when I when I speak in the lecture class, you know, I, I immediately cancel out the last word by the next word. That's true. Yeah. And, but online, when I write that word, it's there. It's they there. can study it. I can study it. I can apologize for it. There are yeah. all kinds of options. So, I mean, this is so fascinating. And uh, I was also thinking, how do they react to the idea of ethics? Just because I sort of start to understand a little bit better what it is. But um, how does it reflect back to people's life? I mean, it kind of sounds like a, an academic concept. So how do students... No, it's a real like, it's a real life concept. <laughs> yeah. So how I hate how to disagree so? with you, but no, I'm but happy that you disagree. It's really I'm bad. so happy. When we communicate, we're, we're we're doing it. We have an ethical basis for doing mm -hmm. it, right? Um, there's more and more interest, I think, in in the moral dimension of these yeah. of these communication efforts between and among people, mm -hmm. um, and we're becoming more sensitive to the, the violations of ethics. We don't yeah. always put it in, in an true. ethics vocabulary. Yeah, that's true. Why, why the hell did you do that? Yeah. Right? But if you start thinking that maybe what you're, what you're doing is failing to respect my identity, yeah. or maybe you are trying to conceal something from yeah. me and you're, you're doing something. So there's a moral dimension to all communication. Yeah, that's true. But there's not necessarily a moral vocabulary for communication. Yeah. And that's what ethics ethics contributes. And it's it's certainly present in, in speech and rhetoric and, and other things, but when you when you put the medium in there, 
Uh, you're also dealing now with institutions yeah. that have a history. That's the tradition of a long, long story of media ethics. But now you're dealing with individuals who have a technology, yeah. but no history and, and no institution <laughs> and, and maybe no ethics. So if you work for the New York Times, there's a voluminous code of ethics for you to follow. If I'm going to tweet you, I don't have anything to guide <laughs> that's me. That's so true. And, and that's, that's why there's true. more and more interest in, in yeah. what, what's, what's, our, what's our level of development in moral terms. Yeah. And it's going to be reflected. It's going to play out in weird ways in those interchanges over the new technology. That's amazing. You're right. Well, this, this was very, very interesting. And thank you so much for taking the time. Well, you're entirely welcome. I'm glad you found me out here. I, <laughs> yeah, it was very lucky. So I rarely so get intercepted when I'm walking <laughs> in the glen here. I just spot you like from far. So thank you so much again. Oh, you're entirely welcome. Bye-bye. Good to see you. Thanks. <laughs>